so I thought it would be fun while I was on my morning walk with Margo to kind of like look back at all the places on campus that are like sentimental to me and that have like meaning to me so I did that and I took some clips and I thought that I would do a little voiceover for them Welcome to my last day in New Paul's vlog I hope you're ready for some sentimental bullshit First place that I passed by was the gym and I got a clip of the windows in the yoga room which I spent a whole weekend doing a yoga teacher training there last year it was really fun it was really like helped me kind of get in touch with what was going on in my life because I was having a lot of issues with like my roommates and just with being a senior and the stress of that. And then I have a couple clips of Capen, which is my dorm my junior year. It's where I met my best friend Bailey. We were a random roommate and we lived together in this room, third window from the hall. I think maybe it was second, I don't even remember anymore. But that was a really fun year for the most part. This is the student union building. It's like the only pretty building on campus, or not the only one, but it's like kind of the new Paul's like signature. And it's where I have like all of my club meetings and stuff when I was in Dumbledore's army because I'm a nerd. This is the Smiley Arts building, which I only had one class in there. It was my first ever creative writing class that I took at New Paltz. And I remember having like a panic attack during my first workshopping day where we were workshopping one of my poems. And just like everyone was so nice and the professor was so nice and it like made me feel so much more confident and I got such good feedback. The poem is like kind of trash, but it was like such a good experience to get to like share what I was writing for the first time and get like good feedback on it and I don't know. It's just, it was something that I had never experienced before, and this is Bowton, which freshman year, the girl that I started talking to lived there, and then she ghosted me the day after we slept together, which was cool. This is this tree named Joe, or that me and my friends freshman year named Joe. I used to pass it every time we went to the dining hall, and it stayed, like, in bloom and, like, alive really, really late, like, way later than all the other trees, and so we thought it was special and we loved him. And this is the back door where my, my girl used to bring me in. This is college hall, the dorm, which is where I lived my freshman year. Um, it's a historical landmark, so it's an awful place to live because they can't do renovations, and if they do renovations, it takes, like, eight years for them to actually do them not actually eight years but when i was living there i mean two of the showers were broken like the entire year or at least most of the year just because like it took them so long to like put the work orders through to fix things when they broke oh it was the worst also it's where like all the stoners lived uh which i didn't know before moving in but it was so close to class it was such a good dorm <laughs> in that sense it's also where i met like my roommate that i still live with right now and some of our other friends we met there it was great it's also where i took pictures after my graduation last year with my family and I love those pictures. This is Old Main Quads where I graduated last year. Our commencement ceremony this year got postponed so they're just having everyone graduate next year. Ooh, or like have commencement next year obviously I'm still graduating in August but you know. This is just one of my favorite views from campus. It's a view that like I, I usually will stop and like look at when I'm on campus just as like wow I go to school in such a gorgeous place. And this is JFT, which is a uh, fun fact, tallest building in the Hudson Valley, I think. You can see it from like really, really far away. But this is also where my office is, up on the seventh floor. This is just like the concourse, like the main kind of drag. In between classes is always like crazy busy. I don't know, I just have a lot of memories of like just, just catching up with friends or like we walked down this on the way to graduation last year. It feels like the most kind of like New Paltz place because I used to go through it like every day even when I lived off campus. These are these really weird steps by the library that I kind of hate and Margo being really cute on them. And of course the library classic. I spent so much time here. I'm so bad at studying in my current apartment so I spent a lot of time in the library and like in my office doing work and studying and writing papers and yeah I used to get they have these little private study rooms and I used to get them and like lock myself in there before big tests. This is just another pretty view. This is the path that I love to walk on and it's right next to Starbucks so whenever I would go to Starbucks I'd always kind of take in this view. This is, I cannot honestly remember the name of this building but it's where they have like the graduate symposium which I've never been a part of here but they also have the poetry readings every year for um, Stone Sore, which is like the undergrad creative writing publication and I got published in that the last two years at, that I was at New Paltz and I remember last year my professor Pauline who passed away shortly after this there's an award for seniors for creative writing and uh, it's called like, the Tomaselli Award and I got first runner-up which like sucks because it was like 
first place, second place, and then like runner-ups kind of got nothing. But I remember her being like so annoyed that I didn't win. <laughs> I like I could I could sense it coming rolling off of her how annoyed she was that the person who came in first got in first. But that's just my opinion. And yeah, that's kind of it for on campus stuff. Whew, it's my last full day living in New Paltz and that's really weird because I've lived here for like five years and I thought I was gonna be here till August so I really am not emotionally prepared to leave because I didn't know I would have to be. So I need to call into that right now and Margo's here, but I just totally forgot about it I realized it um, a minute ago, which is good because it's only 11.02 and it started at 11 So I'm barely even late. You have more joining the session <laughs> It's just shoes and I still have more shoes that I couldn't fit in here. Here's Margo for size reference. It's a big bag. I just loaded more stuff in my car. It's pretty much full at this point. I left enough room for like my keyboard and hopefully some guitars tomorrow. And everything else that's in here is gonna be a thing that comes when I come back with my parents from my bed and my other furniture so it's weird. Right, Margo? She likes it when I hold her like this because she can look out my window and she usually can't because it's so high up. She's acting like that's not what she wanted, but okay. We sit down so she can get off me. There you go. Okay, there you go. Okay, oh, oh. Margo's just sitting over here squeaking because she's a little cutie. Little squeaky baby, huh? I probably need to do dishes. So I need to pack up kitchen stuff. Basically, anything that's not breakable, I'm gonna pack up now. Breakable or perishable is what's staying for the moment. I honestly don't have room for any food in my car, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. My current packing method has been piling up everything that's mine and then packing from there. So I kind of have like a concise view of all the stuff that's mine. So I'm gonna try to do that with just like little stuff around the kitchen and then stuff in the cabinets that's not breakable and I just pile it all on the table and then put it into a box and it'll be good I hope. <laughs> So I just took everything out of the cabinets except for like my food cabinet that isn't breakable in some way and so it's kind of covering every surface in the kitchen. I'm going to try to put all of the food based stuff over here because so I'm going to put that in a separate box than like all of the, my dishes and little kitchen gadgets and stuff. Honestly I forgot I had some of the stuff because it just got pushed to the back of the cabinets and I wish I had remembered because like I have this like batter dispenser thing and I make pancakes all the time. So 
these are the two boxes that I've saved for kitchen stuff, Marco for size. This box is huge, so hopefully I can fit most of my stuff in here. Because it's also like pretty tall, and that's just like a pretty small box, so that's just gonna be for like littler stuff. But I'm hoping I can pack up at least most, if not all, of this stuff. This stuff might have to wait until next time. It's really weird seeing all of my stuff out of the kitchen cabinets now there's like so many empty cabinets. But yeah, so I'm gonna pack up everything that I can right now and see what happens. So I'll throw you guys at a good angle, I think. I packed up these boxes. Most of the stuff fit. There's like a couple of like weird shaped things. I'm not sure if this is mine. I didn't want to pack something and find out it's not mine. It's just those few things that I didn't fit in here, which I think is honestly pretty good considering the fact that I only have two boxes. I don't know how many boxes. Oh wait, I forgot that I still have room in this box. So I actually should be able to fit at least two of these things into that box, so nice. Let's see. Mm -hmm. 